Hey everyone, it's Ashley. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a part of a video hop for the newest Catherine Pooler release, so be sure to go to the description when you're done with my video to go to the next video and so on. And if you comment on every single video, you'll be entered for a chance to win $25 to the Catherine Pooler shop. So be sure to check that out. For today's video, we are going to be using one of the new background stamps from the newest release, and this is called Peace, Love, and Doves Background Stamp. We're going to be using it in a bit of a different way, but as you can see, I'm using my Mini Misty, and I'm using some repositionable uh, double-sided tape to go ahead and place my cardstock or card front panel in the center. That way, the background stamp hits every single inch of my card front and it's very easy just to go in later and I'll show you and just wipe away that adhesive. I'm using Memento Tuxedo Black ink with this because I will be Copic coloring some of the images here in the background stamp and I'm making sure to apply even pressure all over just to be sure that I get a nice even clean image. And here is where I am just going to go ahead and rub off that repositionable adhesive. It comes off really easily, it doesn't leave any marks, doesn't tear up the paper or anything like that. So I really like to use this, especially in my Misty for things like this, so that it doesn't move at all and I get it just where I want it every single time. So after I stamped this background stamp, I realized that all of these images were basically their own tiny little stamps and I could use them separately as well as together like it's meant to be. But these two doves here, I can cut them out and place them facing each other. And that was honestly the first thing that jumped out to me when I saw this background stamp. And I feel like it's a little bit different of a way to use a background stamp to cut it up and use different pieces, but I really love the idea. So that's what we're gonna do today. I'm going to be coloring both of these doves with W3, W1, and then I'm also going to use the colorless blender. And basically I want these doves to be white, but I still want them to have a little bit of shadow, a little shading to it, just to bring a little dimension and sort of real look into them. So that's what I do. I just take the W3 marker and map out where I'd like my darkest shadows to be. And then I go in and just soften it a bit with W1. And I'm basically really just blending it out a tiny little bit just to make sure that the harsh lines are a little easier to blend. And then I'm just going to go ahead and take my colorless blender and just sort of blend it out to the entirety of the bird, making sure to leave a lot of that shadow where I placed the marker in the first place. I will go back in in just a minute just to sort of bring those shadows in a little bit more and do a little bit more shading there just to make it a little bit more prominent. But basically that's all it is. It's really easy and it gives a lot of dimension to a white dove like this. Or if you wanted to color anything white, I tend to like to use these grays and then blend them out. I'm also going to go ahead after I do both doves and I'm going to color one of the leaf branches and I thought it would be really cute to make it look like one of the doves had one of the branches in its mouth and it was carrying it. I don't know why that is very Christmassy to me but I, I get a very Christmassy feel from it. So I go ahead and finish coloring that up and then I cut them out. Just uh, to make it a little easier on myself I cut the general vicinity of the image first. So I just make a broader cut and cut around the two doves and then around the leaf branch that I'm going to end up fussy cutting out. But I like to have a little bit more, or a little bit less space, I guess. So a little closer to the margins of where I'd like to cut. I find it a lot easier than having this big piece of paper, this big four and a quarter by five and a half piece of paper just to cut out a tiny little image than if I like just make a little cut around it and then I'm I'm able to just do some snips here and there and make sure that I cut where it needs to be cut. And I tend to do that with all fussy cutting things. I, I'd make like a general area and then I go in and fussy cut. It just makes it easier for me. So now I'm going to make my background, which is going to be some score lines. I really enjoy doing this, especially for clean and simple cards, because I feel like it adds a lot of interest and dimension into a card without being too much or overbearing. 
Now this is something that I like to do as well when I have my card front and design ready. I like to just play around with the die cuts a little bit just to see exactly where I'd like to place everything. You, you'll see I go in a few times and cut some leaves off of that uh, leaf branch just because I decide I want it a little bit smaller and then a little bit smaller. So it's just nice to get a general idea of where everything's going to go. So from the Santa approved stamp set, I'm going to be using the Happy Holidays stamp as my sentiment. So I'm going to prep a piece of Midnight Cardstock by Katherine Pooler. With a powder tool, I'm going to use some white embossing powder and then just hit it with my heat gun. And I'll trim that and just make sure that I round the edges because the frame of the stamp itself is a little bit rounded. And I really like that look. So I'm just going ahead and cutting some round edges there. I'm going to go ahead and cut up a some foam tape to place on the back of my fussy cuts and then I am going to again arrange it and I find that if you do it really easily and you don't press down on the die cuts that you're able to just pick up the foam tape um, but you want to be really careful not to push down until you are absolutely ready. So now that this is nearly done this is a four and four by five and a quarter piece of cardstock for the card front. And you'll see for the picture, I end up using a gold sort of matted background. But for this one, I decided to go ahead and try silver. I just wanted to see how it looked with the differences. Um, but they both came out really good. I like them both. It really is just a matter of taste if you like silver or gold. So I use this metallic silver piece of paper or cardstock and this is cut to four and an eighth by five and three eighths. So it's just going to leave the thinnest little border. And for metallic cardstock, I think that honestly, it's, that's all you need. You don't need too much shine unless you want a lot of shine and then go ahead and cut it or cut your card front a little smaller. Um, but I just leave an eighth of an inch peeking through and I adhere it all with glue just to make sure that I have a little wiggle room to make sure that I get everything perfectly centered. And here is the finalized card. Again, this is the one with the gold matted background. Um, but you saw me use the silver. I decided to add a few green Nouveau drops here as well, but I hope that you enjoyed seeing how I created this card and how I used the background stamp in a little bit of a different way, and I hope maybe it gave you some ideas for your own Christmas cards. Again, be sure to go to the description for the link for the next video in the video hop, and I will see you again very soon. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.